Hello friends, I am Aditya Tiwari and I teach uh, general studies at Cavalier. We are solving, starting a new series of solving the questions of uh, CDS exam that happened on 5th of February. We will be solving of each subject that is of general studies, then we will go for science, English and mathematics. You can check our blogs and YouTube channels, Facebook events for that. Okay, so today we are going to solve polity questions. We will try to solve one by one and we will try to explain it. It will be a <coughs> explanation, not in very detail, but uh, if you have already studied polity, you can easily understand it. Okay, so let us try to understand. Let us come to the question number. First question that questions are taken from the latest exam. You can see your relative question number in your sets that A, B, C, or D. Okay, so today uh, the first question that we are going to solve a polity is that <coughs> which of the following are the power of the Supreme Court of India? Now, with respect to the power of Supreme Court of India, we have to identify the correct statement. Now, power generally means of Supreme Court of India that what are the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of India. Now, the jurisdiction is of two types. One is pecuniary and one is according to the area. Now, according to the area, it is already defined that whole of India is the within the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. According to uh, uh, concept of <coughs> subject, uh, we have different jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Now let us see the statement with regard to that. The first statement says that the original jurisdiction on a dispute between the government of India and the one of more state. It is a correct statement. Government of India, if it is a party and other party is a state, then the case will be heard only in the Supreme Court. Now the second option is the power of high power to hear the appeal from the high court. Again, all the appeal and order can be appealed. Uh, all the order or any kind of uh, order or decree passed by the high court is appealable in the supreme court of india so a statement second is also correct a statement third says that passing a decree and order for doing justice in any matter before it it is a very extraordinary power with the supreme court that says that if in any matter supreme court thinks that for complete justice some order has to be passed then they can pass that order like in that case of marriage break breakdown uh, we have a mandatory waiting period of one year but the Supreme Court can grant divorce immediately if he thinks that justice is not served. Now the third, fourth statement is render advice to the president in the matter of law. Again, it is a correct statement. In the advice jurisdiction of Supreme Court, the Supreme Court can uh, ask for, uh, I mean the president can ask for the uh, advice in the matter of law or fact, anything. And the Supreme Court has to render the advice and the advice should be given by a bench of five judges. Okay. Now let us come to the second question. That which of the following power regarding the president of India is correct, which means we are talking about the executive power of the union. Okay, so let us try to understand which statement is correct. First, the executive power of union shall be vested in the president. Very correct line. In the Article 53, uh, it is exactly written what is the executive power of the union will be vested upon. That is the president. Now, that is second course. Uh, statement the executive power shall be exercised by the president only through the officers subordinate to him that is an incorrect statement it is given in the constitution article 53 exactly that <coughs> the executive power of the union shall be vested in the president and shall be exercised by him either directly or the officers subordinate to him here it is written only through the officers subordinate to him so this is a incorrect statement again the third statement the supreme court the supreme command of the defense force of the union shall be vested in the president again that is a correct statement with the supreme command of the union forces shall be vested in the president of india okay so accordingly option one and three is correct that is option c now let us come to the next question this is which of the following statement regarding article 21 of the constitution of india are correct the first statement says that the article 21 is violated when the under trial prisoners are detained under judicial custody for an indefinite period yes right to speedy trial is a fundamental right that has been derived from a judgment of a supreme court that the speedy trial comes is inherently within the meaning of right to life and personal liberty enshrined in article 21 so this statement is obviously a correct one now let us come to the statement second that right to life is one of the basic rights and not even the state has the authority to validate that right. Again, it is a correct statement. You must have heard that uh, famous uh, Menka Gandhi judgment in which the Supreme Court said that the, uh, it means that before Menka Gandhi judgment, there was that a state can validate the, take the life and personal liberty if there is a procedure established by law. But Supreme Court read it that no, 
प्रोसीजर मस्ट बी जस्ट फेयर एंड रीजनेबल तो इनिशियली इट वॉज ए राइट अगेंस्ट एग्जीक्यूटिव नाउ बाई दैट जजमेंट दिस इज ए राइट अगेंस्ट एग्जीक्यूटिव एज वेल एज लेजिस्लेटिव तो दिस स्टेटमेंट इज ऑब्वियसली करेक्ट नाउ लेट एस टू दैट कम टू दटेटमेंट नंबर थ्री that under article 21 the right of a woman to make reproductive choices is not a dimension of personal liberty it is a dimension of personal liberty so this statement is uh, in this sense this statement is not correct it is it is not a dimension but it is a dimension the women have a reproductive right over her uh, reproductive <coughs> uh, choices now uh, it means ki statement 1 and 2 are correct that is option number b is correct now let us come to the next right i mean the next question that relates to article 21a that is the newly introduced fundamental right uh, free and compulsory education should be provided to all children of age 6 to 14 year that is exactly the same line of article 21a it is a correct statement second the improve the imperative of the provision of right to education act is that the school must have a qualified teacher and basic infrastructure yes according to a judgment of supreme court the right education should be a meaningful education it should be education which is capable of being uh, building a person into a reproductive person in, in the uh, of a society not rather than simply mere education so this is again a correct statement uh, there should be a quality education without any discrimination on the ground of economic social and cultural background now this is this have a two meaning what do you mean by quality education so obviously that is a very vague thing and uh, discrimination is not allowed that is also correct but economic discrimination can be allowed right sometime you are given reservation on the basis of economic basis so this is obviously incorrect statement very vague so statement 1 and 2 is correct that is option number b is correct now let us come to uh six uh, question number which of the following statement regarding freedom to manage religious affair as per the constitution of india is not correct people always confuse with this not it is not correct okay so let us try to understand first is the every religion religious denomination shall have the right to manage its own affair in the matter except some minor community that is incorrect this upper part is correct but this some minor communities there is no exception every religion or its denomination have a right to pra practice profess and propagate that religion okay so obviously that or to manage the uh, affairs of its own religion so this statement is incorrect again every religion or any section thereof shall have to re right to own and acquire movable and immovable property that is a correct statement exact line of the constitution and the one line that is left according to law that administration has to be administered according to law so this statement is correct now a statement c uh also oh, obviously this is which of the following is not correct so the statement first is not correct so obviously by default all these all the rest three will be correct okay so let us leave it to that now let us come to the next question which of the following statement relating to the protection of protection against arrest and detention of individual under article 22 is not correct again remember it is not correct now what is article 22 it provides fundamental right to a person who is detained or arrested now detention and arrest and happens in two case first under ordinary laws and second under preventive detention laws in the case of preventive detention laws if you are arrested and detained there is a 3 month time limit after that there has to be a committee a board of a retired of judge of a high court he will authorize the further uh, detention but when you are detained or arrested for an ordinary law there is a time of 24 uh, uh, 24 hours that you have to um, go before the magistrate the person has to be uh, brought before the magistrate excluding the time of obviously the journey now uh, let us see the ex ex uh, statement in that light no person who is arrested shall be detained in custody without being in form of such ground of arrest again it is a correct statement now no person shall be denied the right to consult and defended to be defended it is somehow mis misprinted defended by a legal practitioner of his or her own choice that is also a correct statement every person who is arrested and detained with in before the nearest magistrate a period of one week of such arrest it is obviously incorrect statement the period is 24 hour of incorrect okay now let us come to the next question which of the following statement <coughs> with regard to the preamble of the constitution of india is correct now preamble is the very first structurally part of the constitution what does it says it says the preamble by itself is not enforceable by any court of law again a correct statement preamble is basically emphasize the ideals of the constitutional makers that what kind of india they want now the preamble states the objective which the constitution seeks to establish and promote that is exactly what i said earlier now statement 3 the preamble indicates the source of authority from which the constitution derives its authority that is again a correct statement 
in the constitution there are two lines the first we the people of india and last thereby give them give to themselves this constitution so the authority of the preamble i mean the constitution derives from the people of india all the other legislative and executive or judicial organ derive their authority from the constitution itself but from where the constitution derives its authority that is from the people of india that is why we say that the in india people of india is sovereign neither the constitution nor any executive legislative or judicial authority okay so accordingly you can see that uh, all the three statement are correct so option will be a now let us come to the next question which of the following statement with related to cultural and educational rights in india is not correct the statement it is which is not correct now let us see what do you mean by not correct okay now the statement 9 says that not correct means not correction means that uh, <coughs> every selection uh, sorry section of the citizen has a right to conserve its language script and culture this is exactly the same line of the polity i mean the fundamental right second is no citizen shall be denied admission into any educational institution maintained by a state or receiving aid of a state fund or on the grounds of religion race and language that is again a correct statement anyone cannot be discriminated so basically there are three type of institution in india first administered by state established and administered by state maintained by state and recognized by state in all cases no discrimination can be there now obviously if there is education which is neither maintained not receive out of state fund not administered by state or neither recognized by state there can be a discrimination but in all those cases there cannot be any discrimination now uh, this statement is again uh, the correct one now the state in granting aid to educational institution discriminate against any educational institution on the ground that it is under the management of a majority committee again that is again uh, incorrect statement the state will not uh, grant a, i mean a state will not um, uh, discriminate again any institu educational institution however they can somehow discriminate for the purpose of uh, minority committees inside in article 30 all minorities whether based on language or religion shall have the right to establish and administer educational institution of their choice it is a correct statement again exactly the same verbatim line of the your fundamental right so statement c will be incorrect because it says that under majority committee it cannot be given any discrimination so it is matlab uh, it uh, the state can discriminate so it is wrong state cannot discriminate okay so let us come to the next question that is your total uh, question number 10 which of the following statement relating to the directive principle of a state policy is not correct now again see it is not correct what is directive principle of a state policy these are the ideals or the policies which government i mean the constitution of india expect the government to follows so let us try to it is given in part 4 of the constitution now what does it say the provision of contained in part 4 of constitution of india shall not be enforceable again it is a correct statement it is non justiciable it means it is expected the government to follow it is not compulsory now the b part that is i mean b statement the directive principle of a state policy are fundamental in the governance again it is a correct statement it is basically fundamental yeah govern instrument of uh, governance exactly same thing was contained in that uh, um, uh, government of india 1935 also it shall be duty of a state to apply the directive principle in making laws obviously it is correct and there are multiple laws like that right to education uh, right to employment that manrega these all are basically direct result of following of principle of state policy now the d statement the directive principle are directed to make india an advanced capitalist and <laughs> country of the world again it is a correct directive principle states india has to be a socialist country not a capitalist country so statement d is of the incorrect one now let us go, go to the next statement which of the following statement regarding the president vice president of india is correct let us try to understand it uh is not correct not exactly correct it is not correct let us try to understand one by one the first is the vice president is elected by an electoral college consisting of the elected member of both house of parliament now here is the tricking part it is written here it is elected member and when i taught you i have i mean the uh, students will say here i have specifically mentioned that all the members it is written in the constitution in the case of president the electoral college will consist all the elected members so first statement is incorrect okay so rest obviously three will be correct so let us leave it to that now let us come to next question that which of the following constitutional authorities 
inquires and decides in the case of doubt and disputes arising out of election of the president and the vice president of india it is the supreme court there is a specific article if there is any doubt regarding the election of president and vice president the supreme court of india's decision shall be final and there is one another subsection sub clause to that that if the president of india's or vice president of india's election is declared void by the supreme court the work done by him shall not become void by that decision okay that is also you should keep in mind sometime they ask it now let us come to the next question uh in the seats of gram panchayat uh, it relates to the problem of uh, sorry uh, the question relates to the part 9 of the constitution that relates with the panchayats what does it say that seats in the panchayat are filled direct from the direct election from the territorial constituencies again it is a correct statement similar thing happens in state also and center also okay direct election now <coughs> the panchayats the sorry the gram sabha is the body of person registered in a particular village area that is again a correct statement next the panchayat work on the principle of constitutional autonomy now again it is a doubtful one because constitutional autonomy mean by what because all the power of panchayat are subject to the approval of the state government i mean state government can delete or uh, you know um, confer or take the power from the panchayat so exactly it is not autonomy but constitution enshrines that it should be an autonomous body now the fourth one the state legislature may be by law endow the panchayat with it, with the power and authority to enable them to functions no it is already written in the constitution but it requires the approval of the state government so there is a doubt that three or four statement is correct but going by options we think that it is one two and three statement is correct that is option number a i but it can be interpreted either way it can be c also okay but we are going for one two and three statement that is correct now let us come to the next question uh this is a current affair question uh, gst1 uh, that also relates to polity but not exactly what does it say is that uh, uh, it relates more to economy but it has been typed so let us uh, solve it what does it say is that it says that uh, <coughs> uh, what is the following statement regarding gst bill gst bill clubbed uh, various taxes into one and uh, that tax is basically taken at the type of consumption you know the point where consumption takes place and the tax that will be collected will be distributed among the government according to the prescribed uh, rate or you know uh, process that has been um, given by the gst council so which of the statement is correct let us see it will replace all central duties and eligible for a single tax obviously uh, this is in correct statement it do not uh, concise all the taxes few taxes it will subsume central as well as state taxes it is correct one second uh, gst will be levied on alcoholic liquor for human consumption with a uniform rate of 25% no alcoholic liquor has been kept out of the human consumption uh, for human consumption the alcoholic liquor uh, liquor has been kept out it is very politically connected that that tender of that alcoholic liquor petroleum and petroleum products shall not be subjected to the levy of gst no few petroleum products are subjected few are not so again it is not a very uh, you know very straight type option that you will have to analyze that whether it is incorrect or not okay so let us go to the next question that is sark again a polity question that is world affairs uh, sar it is located headquarters in kathmandu that is a correct statement second is that china is the only country with observer status it is incorrect there are nine other countries that have observer status so this statement is obviously b1 is incorrect so let us leave it that now let us come to the question number 15 again it is a factual question you can see which commission came in which years so i am again living in chukyu just uh, google it up it is not a very big problem administrative reform then 11th finance commission 2007 it came karya commission that was basically for inter state relationship okay so it is a very simple question now okay so this was all number of questions that was done by this <coughs> that was asking polity you might have seen that 15 questions were almost regarding polities so next uh, episode we will be having that uh, geography questions and we will try to solve it so do watch our youtube channel and the address is right below in the screen you can watch it okay thank you very much